In this lesson, I'll show you how to determine the exact value of each trigonometric ratio. Questions like these are typically asked in a grade 11 or 12 setting when learning about functions in trigonometry. And in order to be successful with them, you need to know about two things, mainly special triangles and the unit circle. So our goal is to find out the ratio that represents sine at an angle of five pi over three. And what I mean by ratio is what this is equal to. Now it's important to note that most scientific calculators can actually give you the ratio part by substituting this value in for sine. But we want to avoid using a calculator. So how do we do it? The first thing that I want to do is assign this as theta, just for reference. And we want to know where five pi over three radians lies in a polar plane or an xy plane that looks like this. So does it lie in the first quadrant, the second, third, or fourth? And if this were in degrees, you can easily tell that if it's between zero and 90, it would be somewhere here, 90 to 180 over here, and you get the idea. But this one's in radians, so we need to analyze it a little further. Let me write down five pi over three over here. And one strategy that I like to use, since I don't know exactly where it would be, is I like to write it down as a mixed fraction. Notice that the numerator is bigger than the denominator, so I can do that. Three fits into five once, and when you convert an improper to a mixed, you keep the denominator the same. Three times one makes three, plus two gives us five. Therefore, five pi over three is the same thing as one and two thirds pi. And this can be written as, or interpreted, as one pi plus two over three pi. Now what this means for us is that if this is angle zero, and that's angle pi, right, half a circle, a full circle would be two pi. What this fraction is telling us is that we will go one pi, so we'll be crossing these two quadrants, and then we have two thirds of a pi. Two thirds of a pi means that we have passed this quadrant, and now we're two thirds along the way, so we are in the fourth quadrant. That means that this angle five pi over three is in the fourth quadrant. The reason why it's important to know which quadrant it is in is because we want to know this smaller angle, which we call the reference angle. So this bigger angle we just determined is theta, but we want to know this smaller angle so that we can actually use one of these special triangles. And I'll call that smaller angle, just for reference sake, as theta prime. All right, so if your angle is in the fourth quadrant and you want to find your reference angle, what you do is you take two pi, which is a full circle, and subtract it from this bigger angle, theta. So I'm going to subtract two pi minus five pi over three. Now it's important to mention that if this angle were in the first quadrant, you wouldn't have to subtract it by anything. If it were in the second quadrant, you would be taking pi minus your angle. If it's in the third quadrant, you'd be taking your angle minus pi. And as we mentioned in the fourth quadrant, we subtract it from two pi. So subtracting these two fractions isn't hard. You should know how to subtract fractions by now. Find a common denominator. And you can easily do that by multiplying one and three together. That's three. And then cross multiply. Three times two pi makes six pi. One times five pi makes minus five pi. Six minus five is one pi over three. Therefore, this angle right here is pi over three, and that is an angle that you find in your special triangles. You see? This special triangle called the pi over three pi over six and pi over two triangle will help us to determine the ratio. Pi over three is found at this vertex of this triangle. And remember, sine, which is the trigonometric function associated with the angle, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. You should know this relationship, opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite of pi over three is the square root of three over two. So the opposite is the square root of three over two, and the hypotenuse being one, 
So opposite over hypotenuse. We divide this by 1, and anything divided by 1 is the number itself. Now it's important to keep in mind that some special triangles are written differently. For instance, some special triangles might have the opposite of pi over 3 being the square root of 3 only, not the square root of 3 over 2. And the hypotenuse may be 2 instead of 1, as shown on your screen. So just follow the special triangle that you've memorized. So this value right here tells us the ratio for when the angle is pi over 3. But there's something else that you need to keep in mind. The answer, therefore, is not the square root of 3 over 2. Because you have to keep in mind the cast rule. The cast rule says that only cosine is positive here. All trigonometric functions are positive here. Sine is only positive here. And tangent is only positive here. Since only cosine is positive here, and we're using sine, that means that our ratio has to be negative. But if this were cosine, then our final answer would be the square root of 3 over 2. You would not change the sign. You would just leave it as positive. All right, so you need to know the cast rule. Our final answer for sine at this angle is the square root of 3 over 2, and it's negative. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is cosecant at an angle of 11 pi over 6. So the very first thing that we want to know is where is 11 pi over 6 in this polar plane? Is it in the first, second, third, or fourth quadrant? And because the numerator, 11, is greater than the denominator, I can make this into a mixed fraction. 6 fits into 11 once, and the denominator remains the same. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 5 more makes 11 pi. Again, we have an angle that is in the fourth quadrant. Why is that? Well, think of this as 1 pi plus 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6 is like 83%. So going up to here is 1 pi. And then 83% should be somewhere in the fourth quadrant. So our angle is right there. That is theta. Since our angle is here, we will be subtracting 11 pi over 6 from 2 pi. Just as before, nothing has changed. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2 pi is 12 pi. 1 times 11 pi is 11 pi. Subtracting these two, we get pi over 6. So that is our reference angle, this part right here, which I'll call theta prime is equal to pi over 6. We'll be using this special triangle again, the one right here. And this time, we'll be taking pi over 6 as our reference. What does cosecant mean? Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So think of it this way. Cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. Remember, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. We determined that in question A. Therefore, cosecant, since it's the reciprocal of sine, will be hypotenuse over opposite. So we'll be taking the hypotenuse over opposite using this reference angle. Hypotenuse is 1. The opposite is half. So 1 divided by half. You can use your calculator for this, but the answer is 2. Therefore, the answer for this is equal to 2, but we're not done yet. Remember, only cosine is positive here. Cosine and its reciprocal secant. Okay, So cosine and secant are positive here. Everything else is negative. So our answer is negative 2. Now, one strategy that you can use for some of these problems is for questions like question C. In question C, we have an angle, pi over 2, that's very familiar to us. Most of us know that pi over 2 is 90 degrees. And if you know that, that actually helps. Because when you have an angle that you're familiar with, you can easily draw out the cosine wave here. Just the general wave, what it looks like. It looks like this. And you should know this by heart, OK? You should always know this by heart. That's what cosine looks like. 
you should always know cosine and sine. And that's at an angle of zero, that's at an angle of pi, and that's two pi. A quarter of the way is pi over two, and three quarters of the way is three pi over two. We wanna know what the output is for when the angle is pi over two. And as you can tell from here, that the output is zero. So our answer to this, using this other strategy, is zero. Now let's see if our answers were right. We pull out our calculator, make sure that your calculator's in radians as mine is. Five times pi over three. My calculator gives me the same answer. For question B, I don't have cosecant as a function, but I can easily write down one over sine at this angle, 11 pi over six, and we get negative two. And lastly, cosine at pi over two makes zero. And there you have it. That is how to determine the exact value of each trigonometric ratio.